Good morning. Good morning. Um, you guys, you guys might have some questions about Northwestern. I'll I'll start by uh, first and foremost. You know, I'm here, focused on on training camp and the upcoming season. Um, I got nothing but love and respect for Coach Fitz, and uh, you know, I had a great experience at Northwestern. Really did. You know, many many lifelong friends to this day. Um, met, you know, met my wife there. Started a family there. So I had a great experience at Northwestern. Thank you. Mike, you have been showing some unusual, well, not unusual is not the right word, but some creative different looks with guys, moving guys around. Are you gravitating to more of a positionless offense to complement Wink's positionless defense? I think I think uh, the best way to put it is, you know, we're just trying to find, you know, op, uh, identify roles for our guys. So whether that's putting them inside, outside, in different spots, you know, that's part of, you know, the reason why I love our staff is they're creative and, and, and they work together on that kind of stuff. So it's been a good to, you know, kind of experiment with it, experiment with it and then and find out which roles those guys fit into best. So you're trying to build up, I guess, or play more matchup football, I would say, right? Yeah, you know, just being creative and in this part of training camp, you know, you're going to put guys in different spots to see how they respond and uh, continue to, to load them up on the installs and, and, and work through those details. Coach, how much has uh, play calling changed from when you played to where you are now as an OC? Um, it's, it's, I've been in a few different offenses, so I don't know if you know much about my story, but you know, I've bounced around the league for several years, multiple teams, so I've seen a few different offenses and each one of them are different. Um, the concepts might be similar, the, the verbiage and all that stuff you know, might be different. West Coast numbers. I mean, there's all kinds of different systems out there now. And so I think w when you look around the, the NFL over the last, call it 10 years, you're seeing kind of a, a, a transition to more spread out, you know, more up tempo. Um, you're seeing guys in, that are athletic in different spots, um, whether it's in the backfield or on the perimeter. So you're seeing these, the co uh, you know, coaches and players adapt to things you're seeing in high school and in college. And that stuff's trickling up into the National Football League. So it's great, it's fun. Um, I think you're seeing a lot of creative ideas around the league, so it's, it's cool to watch. Mike, we've heard of them, you know, when Hyatt was drafted, speed, speed, you know, and then the whole thing with the route tree and all that, you know, stuff. Um, what have you seen from him so far? And, and clearly his speed seems to show up almost every day mm -hmm. in training camp. Is yeah, he's, he's doing a nice job. He's doing a nice job in the, in the classroom, studying, prepping, making sure he's pre prepared for practice. On the field, he's working and um, you know working through all the fundamentals and techniques that we want him to work through. Obviously, he's you know he's made a couple plays and he's got to just take it day by day. I think that's where not only just him but the entire offense can take that approach. It is his speed? I mean, when you gauge it and clock it and everything like, is it is it blatant? Mm -hmm. do, do you see it there? Yeah, that yeah, that was definitely one of the um, you know strengths of his coming out of college. You know, something that you know we targeted. So. Mike, Isaiah Hodgins kind of proved to be a, a quick study last year. Mm -hmm. Where have, and you're smiling, so I like that, you, you agree. So where have you seen him improve during this camp and, and really, you know, grow into yeah. what you want him to be? Yeah, Isaiah's, Isaiah's, Isaiah's a true professional, comes to work every day, has his routine, goes through the process of being a pro, brings young guys around, um, along with him as well. So he's always trying to coach him up and and give him his experiences and being in this offense for several years. Now you can see this comfortability in it and his understanding of it. So he's continuing to grow it's just like everybody. I think he's just, you know, working on those fundamentals that we talk about and he's not going to shy away from the work, which is which is awesome as a coach. Mike, um, you nearly became an NFL head coach this past offseason. Would you have interest in being a college head coach if that opportunity arose or are you focused just on NFL? I'm mostly just I'm just focused on, you know, training camp really today. Who would you say if Northwestern did come to you? Because obviously that's, that's going to hang out there for a little while here. I'd say that I'm just focused on today. Mike, what can you tell us about the offensive one? I know you just had the one pra padded practice, but you know, you have different guys competing for left guard. You have mm -hmm. some competition at center there. What have you seen from that group? And has anybody kind of really jumped out at you as far as the combination goes? Yeah, the, the, the combination and the depth chart and all that stuff, like I know I'm sure everyone's looking at that. You know, we're, we have a plan. And so we're working through all those spots, not just at the O-line, receiver. I mean, there's a lot of groups that we're working through and how to put people in different spots. 
And so that's just part of the constant evaluation process for us. Do you want right. to try and avoid having a rotation if you can? Would you rather just have five guys straight through, but you know, or, do, or is a rotation acceptable, do you think? I think, I don't, I don't know if you want to box yourself in at this point in training camp or, or, or a weekend. I think we just want to go through our evaluation process and let it declare itself. Mike, when you came to camp, the big question mark was, would Saquon be here? Did you have plan A and plan B, or how did you approach that? Yeah, I think, you know, that's those are all things that we talked about and prep for because, you know, you're building the practice plans and how, you know, the practice scripts and all that. So, yeah, those are things we talked about, but, you know, that never really came to fruition. What is the, um, the um, balance between the competition with Wink every day and the, obviously the teamwork with him? I mean, because he wants the upper hand, you want the upper hand. Yeah, I mean, it's a competitive camp. That's how it should be, but me and Wink have a great dialogue about the practice plan and how we're going to, um, you know, certain things that he wants to see, certain things that I want to see. So we have a good working relationship and, you know, make sure that, you know, whatever we're doing, we're putting the players in the best position, you know, for injuries and for um, so that we can get evaluations as well. And so that's how we've been handling it. What makes this style of defense so difficult, you know, to go against? Yeah, it's multiple. I think, um, you know, we mentioned earlier how, you know, they have a positionless defense. Like, that's it's real. And they, they can they can mix and match a lot of different players. And, again, this defense is a competitive group. They got a lot of speed. They've got smart players. So they can they can be flexible and move guys inside, outside, and, and bring bring pressures from multiple sides. I mean, you guys know that now. But um, And Wink and the, and the coaching staff does a nice job over there. How beneficial is it for John Michael to have to face that defense every day? And how have you seen him handle yeah. the mental aspect of the position? Yeah, we, we had a little bit of that last year where, you know, you're seeing a lot of those pressure looks, you know, probably, you know, way more than you probably see throughout the remainder of the season. So you kind of bank all that, all those looks, and you're, you're able to kind of pull from that throughout the season. Oh, hey, remember this look from training camp. And so you see those looks, there's a lot going on, so you're able to process it quicker and quicker and quicker at you know full speed so those guys are able to see it they're you know, not just looking at a card or in a walkthrough setting you're seeing it full speed and you're watching the guys react and problem solve like saquon said this spring that he would like to be used more as a receiver said that kind of was the plan last year but it changed ideally would you like to throw him the ball more would that open things up more in your offense i think it's too early to tell right now i think you know we're going through that we're, we're practicing all kinds of things with p people in every position so we're just going to go through that process. And when the season comes, it comes. But right now, we're just focused on today and, and putting our guys in a good spot to have a good practice today. For you, Last personally. Mike, this, is your, this, is your Last one, this is your second year with mm -hmm. Daniel. What have, what have you seen? Where have you seen him improve from where yeah. he was a year ago? Yeah, you, year two is always just a little bit easier for everybody, you know, especially when you start brand new with, with the whole staff and you're getting to understand everybody and you're you know, looking to build trust and build relationships. And so, you know, that year one was kind of that first first part of the process. And so working into year two, there's a lot more comfort. There's a lot more familiarity. Um, I think everyone has an understanding of the strengths and the weaknesses of not only the scheme, but the players and how we're coaching it and how we're teaching it, how we're running it. So year two is always easier. I mean, even for myself, it's the same thing. Just another year under my belt, being with DJ and being with the offensive line, the group and the offense and the whole staff. So. Everything is just a little bit more smooth, but we still got to put in the work and we still got to go through the process. Is there anything you've specifically seen him improve on that he wasn't able to do physically? Mentally, yeah, like yeah. I would just, I would just probably speak on just his comfort in the offense. You know, I think he's able to problem solve faster. I'm able to problem solve faster with him, and, and we can work together and you know speak that same language just a little bit quicker.